what makes a movie a movie is the editing. I've been in the business for, I don't know, 37 years, I think, something like that. And I did not really realize what editing was until I was in the editing room myself. There's magic to editing. Magic is, is, is a discovery of something new that wasn't intended that works for the movie. Once you start to realize that film is the sum of editing, then an editing is the thing you're always looking at. Showtime, folks. I think great editing skill will 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 uh, protect a director from suicide. <laughs> First filmmakers simply photographed what interested or amused them. They held a shot until they got bored. Or the film ran out. The fathers of cinema, Edison in the United States and the Lumiere brothers in France, were very pessimistic about the future of cinema. There was probably a worldwide interest in seeing these images move, but once you'd seen somebody playing a joke with a hose, why pay money to see something that you can see for real out in the street? In fact, Auguste Lumiere went as far as to say that cinema was an invention without a future. But Edwin Porter, one of Thomas Edison's employees, proved him wrong. Porter discovered that cutting separate shots together could create a story. Edwin S. Porter really was the one with the life of the American fireman. I think, that started into, into, into cutting um, and creating an emotional impact in the audience with, by intercutting two shots that, have, that are not related to each other. One scene is going on at one place, basically the firemen rushing to a fire with their horse-drawn wagons, and the other scene is the fire, miles away. And you intercut the two, and you understand psychologically and emotionally that these people's lives are in danger, and these people are coming to rescue them, and you, you're rooting all of a sudden for that to happen, and you're hoping they save the people. I often think about what it must have been like to be there to create the art form as it was happening, and say, why don't we try this? Oh, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, we do it in the editing room now. We cut to something, as well, that doesn't work. Well, imagine what they must have said in 1904. The Great Train Robbery was Porter's next film. That's when you really begin to see the possibilities. And I'm not saying this because I'm an editor, but the invention of editing is the thing that allowed film to take off. It's the equivalent of the invention of flight. Both human-powered flight and motion picture editing were invented in the same year, and they have similar kinds of effects. The invention of editing gave birth to a new art and a new language. A language that can transport us in the blink of an eye from the vastness of the desert to the mysteries of the human face. A cut can bridge millions of years, connecting the prehistoric past to an imaginary future. Editing can slow down time or speed it up. The timing of a cut can startle audiences. I'm cleaning out the crooked laundry, see? Little do or I amuse know, them. There's a dope fiend with a long knife trailing after mm -hmm. me. I'm in great danger. Mm. I'll never let go. I promise. <laughs> the choice and length of shots shape our response to everything we see on the screen. And editing is why people like movies. Because in the end, wouldn't we like to edit our own lives? I think we would.
I think everybody would like to take out the bad parts, take out the slow parts, and look deeper into the good parts. I started working on what used to be called the upright moviola, which is a machine, editing machine, that looks something like a green sewing machine on legs. I switched to computer editing in the mid-90s. The editor has to be, he's sort of the ombudsman for the audience. As an editor, you only see what is on the screen, not what was going on at the time of shooting. And that's how it's going to look to the audience. I make it a principle not to go on the set, not to see the actors out of costume, not to see anything other than the images that come to me from location. A major Hollywood production shoots almost 200 hours of film. Unspooled, the film would stretch from LA to Vegas. An editor may work for months, even years, crafting this footage into a two-hour movie. The finished film will contain thousands of shots, each measured in frames of 1 24th of a second. For a writer, it's a word, all right? For a composer or a musician, it's a note, all right? For an editor and a filmmaker, it's the frames, all right? And, and you know, the one frame off or two frames added or two frames less is the difference between a sour note and uh, a, a sweet note. It's the difference between a uh, clunky, clumsy crap, all right, and uh, orgasmic rhythm. <laughs> Verna Fields made many good contributions to Jaws. We all refer to Verna Fields as Mother Cutter uh, because she was very earthy and very maternal. She cut her films at her house, in her pool house, in the San Fernando Valley, and it was a very Hamish -a kind of a work place. The shark didn't work as well or as often as it was supposed to work, according to the screenplay. That's the spot. We had a contest where Verna would stop the moviola on a frame where she wanted to make the cut, and I would stop it where I wanted to make the cut. And if ever we stopped it on the same frame that had already been marked with a grease pencil X, we knew that was the right frame on certain things where we didn't agree. And we all of our disagreements always happened with that darn shark. <laughs> Verna was always in favor of making less to be more. And I was trying to squeeze that one more, because it took me days to get the one shot. So I'm going back to, I'm on a barge for two days trying to get the shark to look real. And, and the sad fact was the shark would only look real in 36 frames, not 38 frames. And that two frame difference was the difference between something really scary and something that looked like a great white floating turd. 